Thank you so much for taking the time to chat with us today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you. Um, so we're going to take a trip down memory lane. Jeff Timmons of 98 Degrees. It's a long, long, <laughs> long, <laughs> long lane. Refresh people's memory. How did we get to this point? Um, how did 98 Degrees get started? Well, you know, I started my original group that would eventually evolve into uh, becoming 98 Degrees at college at Kent State University with some of my good friends that I actually went to high school with at Maslin Washington High School. We did it on a whim. We started singing at a party for some girls. Very, very shallow way to do it. It wasn't like I was like, had set out to, to do this for a living. We, did, we uh, started singing at a party on the fly. Of course, we got attention. They liked, the girls at the party liked it. And then I was like, that's it. I want to be a singer. It was that simple. Then just, uh, you know, there was no YouTube or any social media outlets, no American Idol. And you literally had to go to LA or New York to pursue your dream. So we packed up the Reliant K or whatever it was and, and uh, drove across country and sort of uh, stayed in LA and sort of the gestation of what, what would become 98 Degrees uh, uh, started happening there in Southern California. And four Ohio boys, right? Yeah. Like, how did you make that happen? I don't know because the original group, we were all from Northeastern Ohio and those guys kind of went back, back to, to their roots in Northeastern Ohio. I stayed in California, auditioned people in LA. You think that, that since that's the entertainment capital of the world, quote unquote, you would be able to find people. I couldn't find anybody there that I really thought had what it, what it took. Not just singing, but you know, you get the right look and marketability and most importantly, the work ethic out of all things. And then ironically was introduced to some guys from Cincinnati uh, talk, kind of talked them into coming out and joining me in LA and that's uh, that's Nick and Drew and Justin and what we become 98 degrees what's your favorite memory from? oh my gosh I'm so blessed I have so many memories and we're making them still I mean it's our 25th year of, of being together uh, we're having more fun now actually because we're not taking it as seriously uh, than we did back then but I think you know we have a ton of highlights there's so many I and mean, we did a song with Stevie Wonder we had a song with uh, Mariah Carey we got to perform for Michael Jackson live at his 25th anniversary special. I mean, the list goes on and on. And then there are, there are all the memories that you don't see behind the scenes, getting there, the struggle, getting there, the grassroots part of it that, you know, we cherished as well. And you talk about 25 years, like say that out loud. That's such a milestone. What does it feel like? I can't say it. 25, <laughs> years. <laughs> 25 long years. No, I mean, look, it, it, I joke about it, but it, it did, it, you know, look, we, I have so many experiences that it does seem like 25 years, but at the same time, it is flown by in the blink of an eye. I mean, I can remember starting the group. I can remember all of the, the different things in between having success, going the roller coaster ride of going back down and, and the music sort of fading away. And then now coming back up so uh, it's been quite a journey uh, but I, I wouldn't trade one second of it uh, for for something else and the fan base has not decreased what do you say to those long-lasting fans that continue to support I, I say thank you I mean uh, I, I can't express enough gratitude for our fans certainly they've allowed me to live a dream and provide for my family you know anything they want in their lives and and for me to be able to create and entertain for a living, I never thought that that would be a possibility, especially, you know, a lot of times when you're not from an, an LA or in New York and you're from a small town and blue collar town like we are from Maslin, people were saying, oh, you never can get a chance. But quite the contrary, it's about, you know, believing in yourself, having the proper support team, faith and hard work. Uh, you, can, you can achieve anything and our fans are still there to support us and they're more raucous and rambunctious than ever, which is awesome. You know, uh, uh, so we're, we're, we, feel, we feel very fortunate. Awesome. And we're speaking of the fans. We're giving them what they want this summer. You're going on tour again. Tell me a little bit about that. Yeah. I mean, look, I'm going to be back in northeastern Ohio July 9th, not necessarily with 98 degrees, but what A.J. McLean from Backstreet Boys and uh, uh, Trevor Pennick from Motown. We're doing a fun little thing at Centennial Plaza in Canton, which is really my first big concert in, in Canton. We've done plenty of stuff in Cincinnati as 98 degrees uh, for that town, but I, I've always wanted to come back and do something big here. And now we're getting the opportunity to do that. And then 98 degrees will probably go back on the tour uh, uh, on tour in the fall to celebrate our 25 years and, and give something special back to the fans there and, and also probably create new music as well. What can people expect from that show in Cannes? Oh, it's going to be a blast. High energy. It's, an, it's a mixture of everything. So you have a, a mixture of O-Town. Traditionally, we have Christmas from NSYNC, but he had a prior commitment. And we're, you know, we get up. It's, you know, although 98 degrees, we're known as balladeers. We always have up-tempo, high energy stuff. Now, I wouldn't say I dance. I'd say I'd jump around <laughs> on stage, uh, you know, and look, there are just so many hits between the three groups, uh, you know, uh, that, that, that people have some familiarity with what we're performing and sing along with us, which is, you know, very uh, fortunate for us to have that going on, too. And do you know when tickets go on sale? 
Tickets are, tickets are on sale now. So I think it's there at atckmusic.com, ticket-grab.com, Eventbrite. I mean, anywhere. You can just Google, uh, Google it and you'll be able to find those tickets. Perfect. And obviously, in your, your long career, things have obviously changed from when you first debuted on the music scene what had you would you say has been the biggest change thus far well, well i think technology i mean I, and i think that's a good thing i mean a lot of times older guys like myself and say well you know we did it this way or we did it that way i feel like if you have the chance and you have a desire to create music and, and create art for a living as many avenues that are out there as, as possible are, are a good thing and so the twitters of the world youtube you name it spotify i mean how you can exponentially get to your fan base utilizing technology you don't necessarily have to do some of the old school things that we had to do to keep a fan base going you don't need a million 10 million 15 million people to have a career you can find and cater to a smaller fan base so uh i think it that uh, yeah that's probably the biggest change that i've seen and witnessed uh, throughout the in my tenure in the business. And we were talking a little bit before this interview got started about some of your other passion projects. Um, what would you say you're most in love with at the moment? Well, I've always wanted to do music for other people and break other artists. And music's been so has been undergoing so many changes that it's been hard. And traditionally, you'd have to get a certain distribution company and record company and a lot of money behind you. But nowadays, the, with some of the tools that you talked about, uh, I'm now fortunate to be a part of two two great labels, Aria Music and Cafe Records. And you know, we're breaking artists without having to have a major machine behind it. So those, and I'm also doing some television stuff, producing TV. I've been doing that for a little while now some unscripted stuff, scripted stuff, and there, there's a bunch of tech stuff I'm involved with. I'm just happy to be able to have you know, some great partners and, 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 and great advisors that are allowing me to uh, you know, have success in a number of different lanes. Fantastic. And the one thing I guess I'll leave you with some final Ohio questions. Uh, when you're back in Ohio, I know you said you got home often during the pandemic, but what are your those Ohio things that you have to do? Well, must have. I love seeing my friends. Uh, you know, it's always great to come back and see your friends and family keep you grounded. Right. Uh, and so that's first and foremost. And then, you know, look, there are places I like to go. I like to go check out the high school football field. I like to go to pizza oven pizza and, and, and uh, Canton and and, uh, you know, just like being around people. I love visiting the station here. Everybody's always giving me love here. Shout out to Terry Moore. You rock. Thank you for having me. <laughs> and, and just, um, you know, I like those are the things that sort of in, in, the, in the, whirlwind of the whirlwind of the business that, you, you know, you kind of really appreciate and cherish even more when you get to go back to your roots. Awesome. Jeff Simmons, that's all I have for you. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you.